Welcome dear audience students and scholars here I am Dr. Ramjit Ali in this video we will learn how is national income distributed to the factor of production dear scholar the total output of an economy equals its total income because the factor of production and the production function together determine the total up output of goods and services uh, they also determine the national income in this video we will try to develop a model of the economy by discussing how these factor markets work economists have a long studied factor markets to understand the distribution of income for example Karl Marx uh, the noted 19th century economist spent much time try to explain the incomes of capital and labor the political philosophy of communism was uh, in part of um, uh, Karl Marx ideology nowadays this uh, theory is uh, become a discredited theory we are starting our discussion with the new classical theory of distribution the modern theory examine that how national income is divided among the factor of production it is based on classical uh, idea which goes on 18th century that price uh, adjusts to ba uh, balance demand and supply applied here to the markets uh, for the factor of production together with the more recent 19th century idea that uh, the demand for each factor of production depends on marginal productivity of labor this theory called the new classical theory of distribution is uh, uh, accepted by most economists today as the best place to start in understanding how the economy's income is distributed from firm to household the detailed explanation of new classical theory of distribution is given in separate video so price uh, factor price the distribution of national income is determined by factor price the factor price are the amount paid to the factor of production in an economy where the two factor of production are capital and labor the two factor price and the wages uh, workers earn and the rent the owners of capital collect uh, while discussion about uh, the factor price we have here a graphical presentation uh, factor price and factor quantity and we have a, <coughs> a factor supply in an economy we suppose that uh, we have a fixed uh, factor of production and where the uh, demand curve intersect uh, the supply curve we we get the equilibrium price of the economy so uh, the each factor of production received for its services and in turn determined by the supply and demand for that factor because here we assume that economies factor of production are fixed so that's why the supply curve is vertical regardless of the factor price the quantity of the factor supply to the market is the same the interaction of the downward sloping factor demand and vertical supply curve determine the equilibrium price of the economy to understand factor price and distribution of income we must examine the demand for factors of production because uh, factor demand arises from thousand of firm that use capital and labor we start by examining the decision a typical firm make about how much of these factors to imply so let's discuss the decision facing the competitive firm uh, the simplest assumption to make about a typical firm is that it is a competitive a competitive firm is a small relative to uh, the markets in which it trades so it has a little influence on market price for example uh, our firm produce a good and sell it at the market price because many firm produce this good our firm can sell as much as it wants without causing the price of the good to fall so uh, it can uh, uh, stop selling altogether without causing the price of that good to rise similarly uh, the firm cannot influence the wages of the workers it implies because many other local firms also imply workers uh, the firm has uh, has no reason to pay more than and uh, the market wages and if it tries to pay less 
its workers will take job elsewhere uh, therefore the competitive firm takes the price of its output and its input as a given by the market conditions while discussing about the decision facing the competitive market to uh, the firm uh, uh, make his product the firm needs two factor of production uh, labor and capital as we did for the aggregate economy we present represent the firm production technology with the production function we have a production function y is equal to uh, function of labor and capital where y is the number of units produced or you can say the a total output uh, of the firm the k the number of uh, machines used for the production process and the l is the number of hours worked by the firm's employees or labor holding constant the technology as expressed in the production function the firm produce more output only if it use more machines and or if it implies more uh, work Hours from the workers. Okay, the firm sell its output at a price B, hire workers at a wage W, and and rents capital at R. So notice that when we speak of firms rent renting capital, uh, we are assuming that household own the uh, economy stock of capital in this analysis household rent out their capital just as they sell their labor the firm obtain both factors of production from the household and uh, own them <coughs> uh, so the goal of uh, of the firm is to maximize uh, is proper then the profit equation become as profit uh, is equal to revenue minus labor cost minus capital cost we can write it uh, p y minus w l r <coughs> r k profit is equal to the revenue minus uh, cost or type of cost it is what the owners of the firm keep after paying for the cost of production revenue equals uh, p multiplied by y uh, the selling price of the good p multiply by the amount of goods the firm produce y costs uh, including both labor cost and capital cost labor cost equal uh, w uh, multiply by l the wages uh, times the amount of labor capital cost uh, r multiply by k the rental price of capital r times the amount of of uh, capital k <coughs> okay to see how profit depends on factor of production we use production function uh, we can say that uh, y is the function of labor and capital to substitute uh, for y to obtain k so we get uh, uh, profit is equal to p uh, pf into k l minus w l minus uh, r rk this equation shows that profit depends on uh, on the product price uh, the factor price w and r and the factor quantity l and k the competitive firms takes the uh, product price and the factor price as a given and chooses the amount of labor and capital that maximize profit the firm demand for factor uh, uh, our firm will hire labor and capital in the uh, uh, in the quantities of uh, our uh, on the on those quantities which maximizes profit so here we have a main question what are those profit maximizing quantity to answer this equation a question we first consider the quantity of labor and then quantity of capital the marginal product product of labor the more labor the firm implies the more output it produces the marginal product of labor mpl is the extra amount of output that the firm gets from one extra unit of labor holding the amount of capital constant 
as we have the production function y is equal to function of labor and capital then the marginal product of labor is equal to the uh, f function of uh, labor l plus 1 into minus uh, function of labor and capital the first term here the first term uh, on the right side is the amount of output produced by k unit of capital and here the, we are talking about the right side uh, k plus 1 unit of labor the second term on the amount of output produced by k unit of by talking about the k unit of capital and l unit of labor this equation states that marginal output or marginal product of labor is the difference between the amount of output produced by one extra unit of labor by the amount produced with only labor of the unit so most production function have the property of diminishing marginal product holding the amount of capital fixed the marginal product of labor decreases as the amount of labor increases to so see why we consider it uh, 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 we are uh, uh, discussing here again the uh, example of the uh, uh, of the production of bread at a bakery as a bakery hires more labor it produces more bread the mpl is the amount of extra bread produced when an extra unit of labor is hired as more labor is added to a fixed amount of capital however mpl is uh, the marginal productivity of labor falls fewer additional loaves uh, of bread are produced because workers are less productive when kitchens is more crowded in other words holding the size of the kitchen fixed uh, each additional workers add fewer loaves of bread to the uh, bakery's output <coughs> Uh, here we have a graphical presentation how the marginal product product of uh, labor works. So here uh, we can see that uh, this uh, delta present the marginal product of labor. So see uh, with rising uh, output when we have a capital fix, uh, the marginal product of labor is going to diminish and if we reach on this point the marginal product of labor will become zero so the graph of the production function shows that what happens to the amount of labor when we hold the amount of capital constant and varies the amount of labor so the this figure shows that the marginal product of labor is the slope of the production function as the amount of labor increases the production uh, function become flatter indicating diminishing marginal uh, product of labor diminishing marginal product of labor we can call it DMP so see we have our diminishing marginal product of labor okay from the marginal product of labor to labor demand when the competitive profit maximizing firm is deciding whether to hire an additional unit of labor it consider how the decision would affect profit it therefore uh, compare the extra revenue from the increased production with the extra cost of hiring uh, spending on wage, wages so the increase in revenue from an additional uh, unit of labor uh, labor depends on two variables that are the marginal product of labor and the prices of output because an extra unit of labor produce mpl marginal product of labor unit of output and each unit of output sells for price or p dollar the extra revenue is equal to uh, we can say that uh, multi, uh, p multiplied by mpl so the extra cost of hiring one more unit of labor is the wage w thus the change in profit from a hiring an additional unit of labor is uh, 
rate of prop, uh, change in profit is equal to delta uh, or change in revenue minus change in cost. So we get uh, change in profit, rate of change in profit is equal to P multiplied by MPL minus W. So here uh, delta represent uh, the change in variable. Uh, uh, now we can answer the previous question that how much labor does the firm is going to hire the firm. Managers know that if extra revenue uh, we have the extra revenue uh, P multiplied by uh, MPL exceeds the wages W and extra unit of labor increase profit therefore manager continues to hire labor until the uh, next unit would no longer be profitable uh, that is until the MPL falls to the point where the extra revenue equals the wages. The competitive firm's demand for labor is determined by uh, uh, is determined by we can say that uh, price multiplied by marginal product of labor is equal to wages. We can also uh, uh, write this equation as or it can also be written as uh, MPL is equal to W over P. So marginal product of labor depends on uh, real wages of uh, workers. So we can say that W over P is the real wages. The um, the payment to the worker mayor in unit of output rather than in dollars to maximize profit the firm hires up to the profit at uh, which the marginal product of labor equal the real wages so for example again consider the bakery example so suppose that the price of bread p is 2 per, uh, per loaf and our workers earn at a wage uh, by uh, uh, 20 uh, 20 dollar per uh, per hour the real uh, wages w over p is equal to 10 loaves per hour uh, in this example the firms keep hiring workers as long as the additional workers would produce at least um, uh, 10 loaves per hour uh, when the mpl falls to 10 loaves for all or less the hiring additional workers is no longer profitable for the firm. So here we have a graphical presentation for the marginal product of labor. So uh, this graph shows that how marginal product of labor depends on amount of labor implied holding the firm's capital constant that is uh, 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 we have the MPL uh, curve here uh, because the MPL uh, uh, is diminishing uh, as the amount of labor increases this curve slopes downward for any given real wages the firm higher up to the point at which MPL uh, equals the real wages hence MPL um, uh, graph shows uh, that the firm's labor uh, uh, firms demand for labor as well so the marginal product of capital and uh, capital demand and the firm decides how much capital to rent in the same way it decide how much labor to hire the marginal product of capital MPK is the amount of extra output the firms get from an extra unit of capital holding the amount of labor constant we have uh, equation MPK is equal to the uh, a function of uh, k plus 1 l minus function of uh, uh, k l so thus the marginal product of capital is the difference between the amount of output produced with extra unit of capital and that produced with only uh, unit of capital so like the labor uh, capital is a subject to diminishing marginal product once again consider the production of uh, uh, bread at a bakery for several ovens installed in the kitchen will be a very productive however if the bakery install more and more ovens uh, while holding 
uh, its labor force constant it will eventually contain con contain more ovens than uh, than than its implies can effectively operate hence the marginal product of of the last few ovens is lower than uh, that of the first few so uh, the increase in profit from renting an additional machine is the extra revenue from selling the output of that machine minus the uh, uh, rental price. So then the profit uh, uh, change in profit uh, become as the change in revenue minus change in cost. We can write it uh, uh, P multiplied by MPK minus R. To maximize uh, profit, the firm continue to rent more capital until uh, the MPK falls to equal uh, the real uh, rental price. To sum up the competitive profit maximizing, the firm follow uh, a simple rule about how much labor to hire and how much capital is to rent the firms demand each factor of production until that factor's marginal product falls to, falls to equal its real price. So we have uh, MPK is equal to uh, R over P. So the real rental price of capital is the rental price measured in unit of goods rather than in dollars. So the division of national income, uh, having analyzed how a firm decide how much of each factor is implied, we can and we can explain that how markets for the factor of production distribute the economy's total income. So if all firms in the economies are competitive and profit maximizing, then each factor of production is paid its marginal contribution to uh, to the production process the real wages are real paid to uh, each workers equal the MPL and the real rental price paid to each owner of capital equal to MPK okay the total uh, real wages paid to the workers are therefore MPL multiplied by L and the total real return paid to the capital owner is MPK multiplied by K. So the income that remains after the firm have paid the factor of production is the economic profit of the owners of the firm. The real economic profit is equal to economic profit is equal to Y minus MPL multiplied by L minus MPK multiplied by K because someone want to examine the distribution of national income then rearrange uh, the term as follow we get uh, Y is equal to MPL multiplied by L plus MPK multiplied by K plus economic profit the total income is divided among the return to labor, the return to capital and economic profit. So here we have the main question that uh, that uh, that how large is economic profit? The answer is surprising if production function has the property of constant return to scale as is often thought to be the case uh, then economic profit uh, must be zero that is nothing is left after the factors of production are paid this conclusion follows a famous mathematician Zell's uh, theorem uh, which states that if the production function has a constant return to scale then we have a, a function uh, KL is equal to MPK multiplied by K plus MPL multiplied by L. If each factor of production is paid its marginal product then the sum of these factor payments equals total output. In other words constant returns to scale profit maximization and competition together implies uh, that economic profit is zero. So 
If economic profit is zero, how can we explain the existence of profit in the economy? To answer uh, this question, uh, the profit as a normal, normally used in a different uh, from economic profit. We can assuming that uh, there are uh, three types of agents, workers, owner of capitals and owner of firm. So the total income is divided among wages, uh, return to capital and, and economic profit. So in the real world, however, most firms own uh, rather, uh, rather than rent the capital they use because firms owners and capital owners are the same people, economic profit and the return to the capital are often lumped together. If we call uh, this alternative definition uh, to uh, of economic profit to an accounting profit, we can say that accounting profit is equal to the economic profit plus MPK multiplied by K. So under under the assumption of constant return to scale, profit maximization and competition, economic profit is zero, and if these assumptions are approximately described in real world, then the profit in the national income accounts must, uh, must be mostly the return to the capital. So each factor of production paid its marginal product and these factor payments uh, exhaust total output. The total output is divided between the payments to capital and the payments to labor depending on their marginal product. So this is all about how is national income distributed to the factor of production. So see you with another video. Ciao.